The following presentation is brought to you by the Realm Network. Lagrasso versus Lagrasso, right here on Zins Russo's The Brand and Big Vito Brand Audio. I'm the Mrs. I'm Noel, and this is the Mr. Big Vito. <laughs> What's up, guys? I hope everybody's having a good evening and a great day. Hope everybody has a safe weekend. Um, this is Vito Lagrasso, the co host here with the producer, the lady who does all the magic behind the scenes, Noel Harlow, my wife. I'm a Director, photographer, producer, you know. You're working. I do all things, and I look good doing them, Vito. Yes, baby. I do. got a little feather on you. I'm wearing this specifically today. Now, I purchased this robe a few months ago because I've always wanted one, and I was just on one of those kicks where I just want one, and I just get one. But um, me and South Philly Neen, we, we have a specific use for these robes. Do you know what they call, we call these robes? No, I don't. Officer, I haven't seen my husband since last night. What do you mean you found him? You know what I mean? Like one of those soap opera, over dramatic, like I killed my yeah, husband. No, uh, it's that's pretty, that's what this, yeah. this is. This is except, my... you'll be, except when they say, you know, oh my God, officer, I lost my husband. I haven't seen him last night. Yes, ma'am. He's in Key West. We'll send him home as soon as he's done with vacation. Then I'm not going to be able to wear the robe for that. I'm going to have to be, you know, doing something else. You seem to, you know, be, I don't know, heading towards an open marriage. Is that what you're looking for? You're going to go to Key West and be missing and... Yeah. Vito, 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 Vito. Did I have two bachelor parties? That was a long time ago, Vito. And did I have a third one that you didn't know about? I'm sure you did. Probably. Well, Vito, I, I, brought, I wore this robe specifically for the topic this week. We are back to having a vote. And um, let me give you a little lead into what the topic is. So, okay. you know I love... I love, like, crime mysteries and, like, when 2020 has an unsolved mystery and unsolved mysteries mm -hmm. and all that shit, right? Like, I'm very into that kind of thing. I, I love... I love that. So I was watching something that a girl had put on TikTok where she said they actually have a letter from um, a collection of things that was at Lizzie Borden's house. Now, you know, Lizzie Borden killed her parents. You know, the old thing gave him 40 wax. You know a lot about wax, I'm sure, with your background. Um, they found a letter that was sent to her sister 16 days after her parents were murdered. Right. And Lizzie Borden had been in jail at that point for eight days. The letter is from a man who was just outside the city. And he was a, a peddler or what I guess we would refer to as a door-to-door -door salesman now with a cart. And he ran into a guy in the street that said, I was just in a fight with the farmer who would not give me any uh, money that he owed me. And we got in a fight. And he said the man was drenched head to toe in blood. And he said um, he bought a few things. He had about $5 on him. He bought a few things. He bought some things to black his shoes out because he was covered. His brown shoes were covered in blood. And he said, I am afraid to come forward, but I believe he is involved in your parents' murder. I just heard about the murder 8 o'clock that night, and I ran into the man early in the afternoon. And he said... Um, Back in the day when you were a witness to something, the police could hold you because they didn't know if you were involved in the crime. Like right. their housekeeper was held with Lizzie Borden for a few days. I don't know if people knew that um, because she was a witness to a crime. So um, this guy was afraid that they would take him and put him in jail. And he's a peddler. He's earning money for his family. So he didn't want to come forward. But he wanted the sister to know that he believes this man killed her parents and begged her not to tell the police. He thought Lizzie Borden would get off because she was a woman. So now people are investigating and thinking it is possible that Lizzie Borden did not kill her parents. 
that this letter that was received from a stranger who was a peddler with lots of details may have possibly killed Lizzie Borden's parents. And in fact, this guy may have gotten away with murder. Lizzie Borden's father owned a farm. This guy said a man that owned a farm and him had had a fight and that it ended badly, but he didn't want anybody to know about it. So here's my, my thing. I was thinking this guy may have gotten away with the perfect crime. He may have completely gotten away with this that even now, how many, over a hundred years later, we're still saying Lizzie Borden rhymes and Lizzie Borden TV shows and all these things, saying she murdered her parents when perhaps she may not have murdered her parents at all. So I'm wearing my perfect committing a crime robe and my question to you and the vote this week is, nowadays, is it even possible to commit the perfect crime? Do you think that it is possible to commit, the, and it could be a bank heist, it could be murder, it could be espionage, it could be anything. But in this day and age, is it possible to commit the perfect crime? It is possible. State your case, sir. You have the floor. I guess um, if you don't have any witnesses, nobody could testify against you. I mean, you talk about going back in the day, like really back in the day. And if you had beef with somebody in the street, you fought and the beef was over. Correct. Correct. There was no, nothing right. You did your thing and that was it. You shook hands afterwards and you see everybody, hey, what's going on? And that was it. But nowadays. Nowadays. When you watched, um... What's the name of the movie? Uh, Perfect Eleven? Ocean's Wait, Eleven? Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> we were just talking no, about Ocean's Eleven. Ocean's Eleven, right? You talk about guys who plan the perfect heist. Right. Very smart. Calculated. New. Now you're talking about an elaborate thing like with a systems and cameras and casinos and guards and everything had to work perfectly. So you're talking about the George Clooney Ocean's Eleven, not the Frank Sinatra Ocean's right. Eleven. Okay. Then, in Fast and Furious, when they stole the safe. Right. And they did the switch underneath the bridge. And then when they were confronted on the bridge because they saved the rock's life. I'm going to let you go, Toretta. You know, and The Rock thought that he had, you got to leave the money. And he was like, okay, I'll see you down the road. The switch was in. He, even he had a laugh, said, these son of a bitches pulled it off. You can do the perfect crime and you could do the perfect heist. But it has to be that calculated. Elaborately planned. You think? Right. If you watched um, De Niro... Versus, um... Versus, like it was a fight? Are you talking about Casino? No. No. Um, it was De Niro against uh, Michael Corleone. Oh, Godfather. The Godfather, right? And it was where De Niro was a bank robber. Right. And uh, what's Corleone's name? Michael uh, Corleone? The His real name. Oh, I can't remember his real name. What's his real name? <laughs> I can't remember. Anyway. I've been doing too much work today. I'm a brain drain. Anyway, when he was a bank robber and he was a cop, he got away with the perfect crime, but he knew it. He couldn't catch him because he kept outsmarting him until he got caught at the end. Because he was in love with this girl and he went back for the girl instead of not giving a shit and being on the move. Right, right. So you can do the perfect crime. You can do the perfect execution. But everything has to be perfect. All right, do you want my end of the argument? Because I don't think you can commit the perfect crime anymore. Go ahead. All right. Here is why I don't think you commit the perfect crime anymore. We are too connected to technology to commit the perfect crime. 
they have cameras everywhere you go, enough that they can go back and see if you have driven on a certain road because there's cameras on the road. And they've been catching people who think they've committed the perfect crime over and over again. There was a man recently and there was a, a Netflix documentary about him. He killed his wife and his two daughters. And he was very calculating on what he did and he ended up burying her but sinking the two girls inside of an oil tank, which is absolutely horrible, and I apologize if that upsets anybody. Oh my God. Awful, right? But they caught him because of cameras. They could track where he was and what he was doing. And people that do a perfect crime usually tend to not do a perfect crime by themselves. It's almost impossible to carry out an amazing perfect crime alone. They're having an affair or they've stolen something. Something will always pop up that will link them back. Now, this guy was having an affair. And this woman came forward and said, I thought something wasn't right about him. We were having an affair. Even though his wife was pregnant, he had a family. She came forward. They were able to go back to his neighbor's ring cam and be able to see footage of him coming into the house and when it was and if his wife ever left the house, which she did not. They, the problem is we're just very connected to technology. And I don't think it's possible, that being said, to commit the perfect crime. How do you avoid neighbor's ring cams? How do you avoid driving on a roadway? How do you avoid going into a store like Lowe's if you're going to get like whips and chains and bags and cement or whatever it takes to do a crime? How do you stay off the Lowe's camera? You can't. They're everywhere. The perfect crime, may I say dot, 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 unless it's something done in anonym, like anonymously online. Like if you make up a fake, like, account to steal somebody's money out of a that can be harder to trace but an in-person perfect crime i don't think i don't think so Vito. i don't think you can pull it off and somebody will be a rat you know somebody will be a rat if somebody knows and they don't get their fair share come on how many times in in your life doing whatever doing whatever there's a rat how many times how much time? Oh, you know fully what I'm talking about, Godfather. How many times have you come across a rat? I can't remember. Yeah, that's what he always says. But you know what? He might say that. But somebody else will rat him out. Because there's always a rat, Vito. There's always a rat. Mm -hmm. I hate rats. That you do. So, bottom line is, I don't think that it's possible to do the perfect crime. Back in the day, yeah, there were tons of perfect crimes committed. They're still looking who killed the Black Dahlia, who was Jack the Ripper. They're still looking for these people. But even now, they're starting to put their crimes together with DNA evidence and starting to be able to trace things back to people. Even crimes committed hundreds of years ago are starting to get solved because they were the perfect crime. Now we're just all over the place with your DNA. People registering for 23 and me. You know, say your brother registers for 23andMe. He's given his, his DNA now to 23andMe. Well, guess what? Now, if there's a crime committed, they have link to your DNA through your brother because they'll know a close male relative DNA matches with your brother, most likely Eddie. <laughs> and they're going to say, hey, somebody committed a crime linked to Ed LaGrasso. And then they're going to go back and then they come up with you. Did you think about that? I know you won't do 23 and me. For what? Well, you told me you would, like my mom was like, oh, you and Vito should do 23 and me because you could see like all the places where you were from. My mom just really wanted to find out you weren't Italian. She had underlying motives. But then you told me you wouldn't do it because you would find out that you had random kids out there somewhere that you didn't know about. But I'm not interested in any of that stuff. No, but my mom just wanted it to say like you were like Swedish or something because it would be hysterical to her because she likes to pick on you, which is no, why mom wanted you to do 20. I know, and you know she still owes <laughs> no ties. She does she's not. A, she is a Welsh. Florida. She is a Welsh. My mother made you a beautiful ceramic tile. Your mother's a Welsh. Tire, tile. She tire. is a Welsh. No, she's not. She she's a wonderful me lady. Coupons. She watches the show. She promised me snow ties. Marry my daughter. I will give you all this stuff. Did I get anything? No. 
Now you guys know why I purchased the robe. I put right. up with this. All right. You know what that wench gave me? You called my mother a wench? How you? know what she you? gave me? Set of dishes, yo. She gave you a lot of things over the years. She, she, She's a wonderful me mother headache, of all to you. Headaches? She never gave you a headache. Ajita? You guys have only had one fight that I know of. I was there for it. It was hysterical. But it wasn't at the time. But it is now. Yeah, you guys... Well, yeah. <laughs> well, you could tell your mother, like, well, why don't you get on your fucking broomstick, you bitch, and fly away. She said, fuck you, you bald bastard. <laughs> that, and that's what I said. I almost peed my pants because yeah. I just got out of surgery and it yeah. was hysterical. I said, why don't you get on your fucking broomstick, you old bitch, and fly away. <laughs> she said, fuck you, you bald bastard. No, she, no. <laughs> no, she said, fuck you first because I never got disrespectful to your mother. Your mother was disrespectful to me. And then I freaking repped up. And that shit lives on. And she's a welch. Please understand in the Harlow family, things like fuck you or giving each other the middle finger is basically a greeting I was No, it's on. ghetto. I tried to it's up level ghetto. my class ghetto. as coach. Ghetto. But these are the things that happen ghetto. in my family. And ghetto. my mother is not a wench and she is not a ghetto. And she's a very good mother in Do you too. know she's the big that dog. her family, her father, mother and father live right next door to a nudist colony? If you're not next door, yes. you live right next door to a nudist colony, you jerk ass. I swear to you, you're always making fun of my parents. You're my dad's like BFF. But you're saying, talking about your mother stood down and I, I love got, my mother. I'm trying to rep shit. And what about the night your mom wanted to knock your ass out? Oh, that night I was like partying a little hefty. Uh, sometimes I can be a little. Obnoxious, right? Vicarious, I was going to say. Or like a little... So you know, here's a story, yo. Here's a story, Why right? Why are we telling stories? All right, hold on. Just let me cry. finish. Don't interrupt. because People want to hear this. Oh, Jesus. Right. So she's... She had a few too many. She's on the phone with me. This is before we're married. Yeah, I'm like 29 years old, too. All I'm right. like a kid. She's fucking cursing me up a storm, telling me, fuck you, fuck this, fuck that. And you know what? I must have been mad. I, and she, but I did nothing. I wasn't even in the state. I did nothing. I said, like, what the fuck? Is you might not even been in Florida. Uh, you might have been on the road. <laughs> so, I was like, all right, fuck you, bitch. I ain't talking to you. Fuck you. She goes upstairs. She told me, she said, I'm going to go wake up my mom and punch that bitch in the face. I never said, I would never say that. You were drunk. But I would still, I would never hit her. Anyway, she marched Ever. upstairs. Get up, old lady. I said, get up, old lady, and tell me why you don't like me. And she's like, because of this. <laughs> Go to bed. Go to bed. Like, no, all right. Or I'm going to get up and knock your ass out. My mother would never, never. Guys, this shit happened. Not since I was a teenager would I ever do these things. This happened. Guys, I was like 29. I was like a kid. No, you were in your 30s. No, when we first started dating, I was... Uh, you were 30. I oh, know I just turned 30. Yeah. Only a couple weeks. You were in your 30s. I was 30, not in my 30s. You were in 30. I was. They're trying to make me older than I am. The other day you told me I was pushing 50. I'm not even close to 50. Baby. You're pushing 60. Baby, you you pushing it, girl. No, no, you're pushing it, girl. No, you, you you're pushing, pushing it. it. You're pushing it, girl. Your ass is pushing you're it, girl. Pushing it. Your ass is pushing it. My ass is girl. pushing Pilates. Girl. What up, girl? Tight ass, uh-huh. I took beautiful photos of you today that I, I'm going to share with everybody, but I like photos of Vito so much, guys. Do you know why? Because they're silent. There, I said it. Anybody notice this great beard? Anybody that, notice uh, this beautiful new hair I got? No, nobody. Then nobody noticed your beard. They all do. I don't think so, Vito. Anyway, guys, if you would like to vote. Yes. We still have a lot of show left to do, but I want to put the vote out there. If you would like to vote... If you can commit the perfect crime nowadays, or if you cannot commit the perfect crime, you can go over to Magic T. Spiller on Twitter, that's me, and place your vote. You have five days to do so, and we will announce the winner next week of who is the champion of champions. Okay. The Capionato of Capionatos, and it'll be me. So if you think, you know, you could commit the perfect crime, if you don't think anybody commit the perfect crime, vote for me. Five days. We'll be back here and we'll tell you. Now that I said that out loud, Vito, yeah, you um, you tell these stories about, you know, 
my mother and my my beautiful mother who is just nice to you and makes you those little stupid chickens that you like what do you call them cornish game hen or something chickens i haven't been to your mother's in your mother's house in two years because we live in florida maybe three we live in florida three years so she ain't made shit Oh, yes, she has. She and, hasn't made me shit. Um, and we're supposed to, if it works out, you're supposed well, I'm going at the end of the month, but you're supposed to go back in October. I'm sure my mother would love to make her son chicken. She loves you. She yes, she does. Everybody loves you, Vito. She you're didn't even send a beautiful. birthday gift this year, yo. She didn't even remember it was your birthday. Thank you. Uh, well, you cut her some slack. She broke her back. And, like, you want her to go out and, like, get Why you a birthday Why is it gift? that your family has all these excuses around my holidays? Your family, not once, and I love your brother Larry, not once, has ever even sent me so much as a birthday card. Ever. They don't send me member. shit. They're going to send you shit. But you want everybody shit? in my family to send you things? Did I my put up with you. you. Did my, I put up with you. Did your, my sister send you a gift? No. Yes, she did. My side chick E? Yes, Dr. E sent you a gift. She sent you the roulette shot you know, thing. Her sister and me, we have like this, this great relationship. It's a love love relationship, you know? And Love Love. <laughs> we get along really good. We you know, we have great conversation, we laugh, everything is cool. So it's good that you get along with your in laws and your, your wife's family. So I'm I'm happy about that. But her mother, she ain't doing shit for me. Is my mother taking me in at the end of the month so you can have a break from me? Hallelujah. So then you better send her a thank you. I, I love that you want, like, these breaks from me. I'll just look at pictures of you. Guys, listen, I'm going to be alone at the end of the month. So anybody out there wants to come throw a party, want to do something, want to go to the nudist resort, hit me up, yo. You know, Vito, I've always been attracted to bald men with accents and um, since I was a small child. And you are just annoying. This, you don't go to the nudist, like, I, can't you talk with, like, I don't know, like, I don't know. But I got this beard going. Anyway, speaking of bald men with accents, today is Yul Brenner's birthday. And everybody on the show knows we love Yul Brenner. 101 Years old, heavenly birthday today. Love Yul Brenner. You'll Beautiful bald birthday. man with an accent. Put it out there. Love Yul Brenner. He's our favorite. I am his clone. Literally his, his clone. clone. So Literally. if there was ever a, 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 you know the pictures we took today? Please send it to his daughter. Oh yeah, I will. I'll send it to his daughter. I'll make sure so, she sees them. I am Yul Brenner's clone. I've been named that quite <laughs> often. It's a great compliment. He's a very handsome man. I'm very... Uh, happy that I could be in his company as far as looks because he he's a good looking motherfucker. You gorgeous. Know? Gorgeous. The most next to my husband, the most gorgeous man to ever walk the planet. You know, when you were younger, did you ever have like a crush on somebody that kind of like formed like as your adult? Like I still remember the first time I ever saw Yul Brenner and I had a crush people are gonna laugh at me, but like I have like no in between. You either have no hair or long hair. I don't like anything in between. So I like Weird combo. Yul Brenner and Axl Rose. I thought Axl Rose was gorgeous from Guns N' Roses, which is a weird combo of people. Did you ever have anybody that, like, formed your adult, like... No. no? Did you ever have a crush on anybody growing up when you were younger? I really don't... I don't remember. You really. don't have, like, a Sophia Loren or, like, a, no, any I, of the... I wasn't a... I was a sports guy. I just wanted to play ball. Well, you were probably already getting women already, so you didn't yeah, need to have a crush on Yeah, I didn't need to have a crush because I was pimping hoes. Well, I, I saw Yul Brenner when I was four years old. One. And that was my first crush. All right. But you probably were having sex with somebody at four years old, so I mean. They were holding me. I thought so. Well, you told me, I think, what is it you told me that when you were born, something about the nurses were like, I, I, what did you say? I don't even remember how you they said it. They were all it. lending a breast to breastfeed. <laughs> yeah, that was what it was. They were all lending a breast. <laughs> you pervert. No wonder you never... You never had a... I know you do have a celebrity crush, though. Who? Oh, I know you have a celebrity crush, and you're going you're gonna to act like you don't know, but you fucking do, Vito mm. LaGrasso. Your celebrity crush is Jennifer Lopez. 
You talk about J Lo non stop. You're yeah, but, worse than me. Yeah, but J Lo is just a, uh, just a, uh, was just a a line to pick up chicks and clubs. Then why do you? St- I just heard you mention J uh, J Lo on uh, Getting Color. Right. We, <laughs> yeah, because we were talking about everybody's house has ghetto. Right. You're talking about. <laughs> no, no, go, guys. Listen for a second. No matter where you are, how poor you are, how rich you are, the billion of billionaires, right? They all got something going on in their house. Everybody's got some ghetto bullshit in their house, right? So I was talking about different scenarios. So I talked about A-Rod and J-Lo, right? When you look at them on TikTok, their family with A-Rod, J-Lo, and, and the girls and all the... They were beautiful. It was like... You have everything. She's beautiful. He was a handsome guy, baseball player, world famous actress, beautiful looking, happiness, right? And then they were trying to buy a sports team. It didn't work out. And then what happened? Next thing you know, she's off with Ben Affleck on a vacation. And he's fucking moving his shit out of the house. And Vito, you know what messes me up about that is that she was with Ben Affleck in the early 2000s. If you remember, they right. had the whole Benefer or whatever right. it was. Like, Now, think of it this way. like, Can you imagine? I couldn't. Getting back with one of your exes like that? Like, like I'm just saying, like, as an adult, anybody that I have dated forward as an adult, okay? I don't want to insult anybody, but I could never in a million years. Never in a million, million, especially the guy dated before you. I'd rather light my eyelashes on fire than go back to that piece of trash. Would I go back to As, uh, you know, I mean, in adult relationship. Nobody like from like when you're in high school or anything no, like I'm that. No, adult, adult relationships. I a lot of adult relationships. I know. We might be here all night. It'll be Yul Brenner's birthday again before you go through all of your uh, relationships. Like, I feel like we should put the Jeopardy song underneath this. Probably I would give one girl another chance. Whom? Oh, you don't know her. Whom? Baby, it doesn't matter. It matters to me. It matters to me, as the song says. Whom? Babe, it's... Vito. No, maybe there's two. Jesus, age Jiminy Christmas? B- who? Baby, who? I don't want to put their name out there. That's not cool. Then give it a little whisper. <laughs> that doesn't count. Uh, just forget it, baby. Let's close the show. Would you really get back with an ex? I'm not closing the show until then. Like, I, I, I seriously. Ex-husband? <laughs> never. ex Fiance before you? Never. It wasn't an ex fiance. It wasn't an ex wife. It wasn't anybody I lived with. Just somebody you hooked up with? Was it the Rockette? Two girls who I would give a second chance to. That's all. I'd have to be dead. Hmm? I'd have to be dead before you'd have the opportunity to give anybody a second chance anyway. Don't think about committing the perfect crime. I don't think it's going to happen. Well, I got the perfect beard. Oh my God! Has anybody loved themselves more than you, Vito Lagrasso? Anyone? I got to tell you, you know, when I do enjoy my Saturdays, and my wife does come with me when I go to the barber shop. It is a great occasion. You've never seen a whole bunch of barbers light up when I walk in a fucking place. That's because you talk shit in Spanish when you're there, right? And you're talking about <laughs> maybe ten barbers say hello to every one of them, shake a pound, what's going. On. Go to take a seat, wait. And then the banter starts with the three chairs that are this way. And it is fucking something else. And it's a good time. I enjoy it. I enjoy getting my face done, being trimmed and groomed. I'm even thinking about going twice a week. You're going to go twice a week now? You've become so high maintenance, I can't even keep up with you. Now, I'll even give you something else. Something I did, I've been doing different. Okay, when I go to the barber, I have him trim the bottom of my eyebrows and I've been letting the tops grow. So today, I said, babe, can you fix me up? 
because my wife used to do, you know. That was a cosmetologist. I said, babe, can you, so I got out my, my comb, my brush, my handy dandy scissors, my old manicure kit. I said, here you go, babe, let's do this. So having the perfect arch in your eyebrow, I have shape again, which is good. I love that you trust me and absolutely bat blind as shit person to do your grooming. But our friends also trust me to cut their hair sometimes, which I totally don't understand. Should I not trust you and go to another woman's arms? Why getting your eyebrows done do you have to be in anybody's arms? Well, when you do, this up, robe is going to come in handy this week. No, I mean, Officer. like, when they're, when they're up close like this and their breasts are here, and, like, you just... I'm waiting for the apology. I'm waiting for, right now. I'm waiting for the apology. <laughs> I am such a good wife to you, producer, director, photographer. And I, I am I'm such a social good social media manager. Okay, and I am such a good husband to you. Oh, but you're going to be in another woman's arms with her breasts in your face. <laughs> My mom's right, you bald bastard. Get out of here. No, I want. I want to hear it. Say something nice so the people know that you're, you, my wife you don't had a mean good, it. My wife had a great weekend this weekend. She was happy. I'm so awesome and great. Well, I, no, that has nothing to do with me. About me. That You having an awesome weekend and my wife this and that and the other thing. You're supposed to say something nice about me. My wife was in a good mood this weekend because we had some loving. What is a lovin'? Baby, you know. I don't know. What is a lovin'? Is he talking about sex? We always have sex. Say something nice about me. The people know we have sex all the time. Jesus. You... That's pretty much all we do. You know, we go out to Disney or Old Town or the, you know, country club, and then we come home and we have sex. And then we do something else, and then we have sex. People know this. We are very sexual people. Say something nice about your wife. She she was very good to me this weekend. This one weekend. She was very good to me. How so? You were nice. I must be the worst person ever. I'm so, I'm I'm so I'm so mean and and angry and all these things. Officer, I don't know what happened to my husband. Motherfucker oh. went to Key West. I'm closing the show. I'll wait for, we'll be recording this show until one o'clock in the morning. Wait for you to say something nice about me. All right, close the show, guys. Say something nice. My wife had a good weekend. That's not nice. That's about you. She was in a things. good mood this weekend. That's not about me. That's about my mood. Say something nice about me. She acted accordingly towards me. I won't now because you won't say anything nice. My wife is a beautiful person with a lovely, bubbly personality. That's a scotch better. We'll work on it for next week. All right, guys. Remember, you can vote on Twitter at Magic T Spiller. Do you think it's possible to commit the perfect crime? Mr. LaGrosso says yes. Mrs. LaGrosso says no. Also, check us out on Patreon. Big Vito's birthday celebration where he runs absolutely wild at magic kingdom and consumes ice cream and has a party here at the tiki bar is up right now mob this week i love vd will be back you have to watch your horror movie everybody's waiting to hear what you think of it so that'll be on patreon.com slash the big veto brand big Vito's big announcement this weekend is he is taking bookings again appearances etc 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 so you will see more coming out from that. We are really excited that he's going to go back to breaking necks and cashing checks. So if you need to book Big Vito, it's Big Vito at BigVito.com. Check us out on all our social media at The Big Vito Brand. And I believe that is it. Check out the new pictures. They're going to be pretty cool. And keep up with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for your support. We greatly appreciate it. Subscribe. Do everything you can. All right? And listen. If there's that special someone out there that you need to give a second chance to, get to that. I'm going to go watch Yul Brenner and the King and I. Goodbye, guys. Bye-bye.